something that I heard Joanna Macy say that really touched my heart um, was that in a way all of her work uh, was offered to the world so that when things really became difficult we would turn towards each other to help each other rather than turning against each other to fight for the scraps of what was left. And I think as our situation becomes more precarious and for some people it is already very, very economically or physically challenged, that the knowledge and the technologies that we have to enable us to pull together and to work together are going to be some of the most critical technologies that we have. And for me, that's part of what lies in the territory of inner transition. Living with that kind of insecurity, whether it's not knowing if your community and your home is going to be bulldozed in the next five years, uh, how you make life decisions uh, now, uh, not not knowing that kind of thing, or whether it's under the threat of eviction because you can't pay your rent or you're not sure about the, f the future of humanity in this world. Uh, these are all very difficult and stressful uh, mental si mental states to have to deal with. And for me, in a transition and uh, the work we've been doing at Grow Heathrow, um, the site where the, th the three of us live, uh, with our wellbeing group, it's all about coming to terms with that in, in very personal ways. But what we've learned is that the personal is also fundamentally part of the collective experience. And so each time we get to grips with it ourselves um, and help each other to get to grips with it, uh, it gets better for the whole. It is a massive struggle to be in that limbo constantly as a community and as an individual. And so our wellbeing group helps to um, allow that space for people to be able to share these thoughts and feelings around that limbo state. And for a lot of people, it is very difficult. And so what we do in Transition, Transition Hefro is to try and make it more accessible to kind of uh, people that might find feelings and emotions quite difficult to be able to communicate. Personally, I found it really hard to try and understand what inner transition is and um, how, how it would work. Um, and just think about something that, you know, our group can do that isn't just doing, doing, doing all the time. So it, it's taken quite a long time, um, probably over three years since uh, the project started to finally get to a point where it's become an integral part of our um, community. And even now, um, it's still, you know, there's, 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 uh, we've got work to do. What I see is that uh, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things and trying to do a lot of things in awareness raising, new programs, new projects, uh, transition projects. But uh, often in uh, the initiative that I know, uh, there are a lot of people that are really tired because uh, they're doing a lot and they're never uh, speaking about uh, what they feel. And uh, we are in a period with a lot of change. Uh, I think if we don't uh, look at this, these uh, emotions, if we don't support ourselves about that, uh, we are going to be very tired and to burn out because it's not possible to support what we have to do without taking care of our emotions and our inner part. We really need to get so much more aware of our own stuff, our own emotional baggage when we get triggered, how we can um, work together with others um, maturely, responsibly, how we can deal with all the challenges of all this work, um, challenges to us. So there's, it's around staying really grounded in what you believe in and not being knocked all over the show and also really being open to collaborating with others um, and sort of putting aside your ego. I mean, there's, there's so many sides of it. I just, I just see it's, it's very much transition is calling people to, um, to grow into a space of leadership, not leadership over, but leadership with.